Hello, and welcome to this chapter. I want to congratulate you on making it through the first two chapters, and also want to congratulate you on your consistency and discipline. And I'm sorry we have not done any coding yet, but remember what we said, we have to prepare so that when we start coding, we understand every single line we type. In this chapter, we are going to talk about the Cortex-M architecture and as the name implies, the architecture is the set of rules that describe the functionality of the Cortex-M. Cortex-M has separate data and instruction buses, hence it is a Harvard architecture. There are two computer architectures which are different in the way of accessing memory. These two architectures are the von Neumann architecture, also known as the Princeton architecture, and the Harvard architecture. Also, the bus structures of the two architectures are different. Because Harvard architecture has separate data and instruction buses, it allows transfer simultaneously of both data and instructions. Von Neumann architecture has only one bus, which is used for both data and instructions. Therefore, data and instructions have to be scheduled transfer. Here we're talking about registers and registers are fast accessible storages inside a processor core and Cortex and processors have a number of registers inside a processor core and what these registers do is that they perform data processing and data control and most of these registers are grouped in a unit called a register bank which we'll take a look at a couple of sections below. Another characteristic of the Cortex-M is that it is a load store architecture. In a load store architecture, if data in memory is to be processed, it is first loaded from memory to registers in the register bank, then processed there before it is written back to memory if needed. This differs from the register memory architecture which allows operations to be performed in memory as well as in registers. Let's see an example of the load store architecture through this illustration. Here, we are going to see how two numbers are added. Let's construct our processor. Let's say we have the register bank, a basic processor here. Let's add some memory and some peripherals, then some ports, and we have ourselves a basic microcontroller. So let's say we want to add two numbers, 300 and 420. And these numbers are stored in memory, the RAM. What happens in a load store architecture for these numbers to be added is that they are first loaded from memory to a register in the register bank. Each operand, each operand is placed in one um, register in the register bank. So we have 300 plus 420. In mathematics, as we remember, an operand is a quantity on which an operation is performed. So here we have two operands. 300 is the first operand plus is the operation. 420 is the second operand. So the first operand is loaded into a register in the register bank. And the second operand is loaded into another register in the register bank. The operation is performed, the answer is loaded into another register in the register bank and if need be, brought back to memory. This is the load store architecture. In load store architecture, both of the operands must be in the registers, whereas in register memory architecture, they could be in memory or in the registers. And remember, the Cortex-M is a load store architecture.